Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at how you can capture an image from a machine that might be on your network. Obviously, this is something that's going to be pretty important when you start working with images because you're going to create a perfect reference system. That's what we did in our last video. We went through the process of even automating the installation of Windows 7, and we added some drivers, and we really got the system exactly the way we like it. And we did a sys prep, and now that we've gotten the system ready to go, what we'd like to do is now image that, create an image from that that we could then use later on to deploy to other systems. And that's exactly what we'll do in some future videos. This comes from our requirements of 7680, where we are deploying Windows 7 in this second section. We're going to capture a system image. We're going to prepare a system for capture, which is what we've done already. We are going to create a WIM file in this video, and I'm going to show you how you can automate this capture. You can also do this manually. There are a lot of different options for doing this, but this is really going to show you the fundamental methods that you can use to capture any type of image wherever you might go. We have already used Microsoft's Windows PE to do some of our automated Windows 7 installation. That's the Windows pre-installation environment. It's a very, very small, minimal configuration of Windows that you can use to start up a computer and perform a number of different tasks. But obviously, it is, it is a slimmed down version. It doesn't include a lot already on the Windows PE disk. For us to be able to do these images, we need to use a program called ImageX. This is a program that comes in that Microsoft application, the Windows AIK that we were looking at earlier. So ImageX is going to be important for us. It's not on the Windows PE. What we need to do first is create our own customized Windows PE CD, DVD, boot method, perhaps a flash drive of some kind, just so we can get the Windows PE started and have ImageX available to us so that we can start to do some of the images. You've probably also got some utilities that you'd like to use, some things that you can use for troubleshooting hard drives, running different uh, applications and utilities from the Windows PE CD or DVD. And of course, you might want to add those to this as well. So the same process that we're going to go through just to add this simple executable to the Windows PE boot disk, we're going to use the same process if you ever want to load anything else on this Windows PE boot disk. And you can really build your own customized version of Windows PE that's specifically for the things that you like to do. In our example, let's just go through the process of adding ImageX to the Windows PE, and we'll create an ISO file from that. We've used our Cheyenne server in the past in previous videos to do a number of things. We're going to go back to the Cheyenne server because it already has all of the programs and things that we need that were loaded with the Windows AIK. So in fact, if you go to your Start menu down here and go to your All Programs, there's your Windows AIK right there. And it has your Deployment Tools command prompt. These are the things we did in an earlier video when we created our Windows PE disk to begin with. So we're really going to do exactly the same thing that we did before. I'm going to pop open a Command Tools prompt here. And let's run some of those commands that we did before. Let's uh, run the one that's going to allow us to copy a PE configuration. We're going to start from scratch. And I'm going to specify that this is an x86, a 32-bit operating system. And I'm going to put everything on my C drive in a directory called WinPE. That'll be easy enough to keep track of. And hit Enter. Now it goes through the process of copying all the files that it needs for a basic configuration of Windows PE. Once it finishes copying all of those and doing the things that it needs to initialize, we need to go in and customize that. See, it didn't take very long. We've now got our Windows PE. It even took us to that directory. You can see a number of files that it has placed in there. Now what I'd like to do is copy some files right into where it's going to be creating the ISO from, which is this ISO directory. And the, specifically the one that I want to copy, and I'm going to have to put this in quotes because there are some spaces in this very long path. And I'm going to specify it's in Program Files. I'm just going to hit Tab there to do a tab completion. It's in the Windows AIK directory. And it is also under the Tools directory under x86. 
and imageX.exe. So I'm reading off this other monitor over here. And I want to copy that to the Windows PE directory under that ISO directory. It's going to take and find that ImageX file and move it over to our working area, exactly what we're going to use to build that CD, that ISO file to begin with. So there, we copied the file in there. And if we wanted to check, I'm going to go into the ISO directory here, change directory, and there it is. There's our imageX.exe file. That's exactly what I wanted to have available to me. So that's great. Now, we also want to do the process of building and putting the, the Windows image file for Windows PE in the proper place. We're not going to do any customization to the Windows PE image. We're simply going to copy it over. So this is what we used before when we were working with this. We chose to take the winpe.wim file, and we we're going to copy it to the winpe iso sources, and we're going to call it bootwim. has a different name whenever we're working with it in Windows PE, and we'll hit enter. It's going to copy that Windows image and put it in that directory for us. Once we have that now in place, we can simply build the ISO. This is what we're going to use, that image that we're going to use to create a boot CD, DVD, a flash drive. We've already done this before, so really this is something that uh, you should be already familiar with. We're using the OS CD IMG program to create that ISO file. I'll use a dash N, a dash B, and then I'm going to choose the, the Windows PE directory with the etfsboot.com. That gives me, uh, tells the system that this is what you're going to boot from whenever it starts up. We're going to use the files in our winpe.iso directory. And I'm going to make sure that we create this into a file that's called winpe. And we'll just put it and call it winpe-imageX. The, uh, dot ISO. That's a pretty good name for it. That way I can, can designate that that's the Windows PE that has that image X associated with it. And let's hit enter. It's now going to go through the process of building our ISO file. And that's the one that we're then going to use. We're going to boot from this ISO file. We're going to create a, a CD, DVD, or something bootable. That's what we'll use when we're ready to image this system. And now image X is going to be available for us whenever we do that. The next phase of this process is not so bad. It requires that we boot our Windows PE disk and use the ImageX program to be able to build this image. We want to be sure that we have a destination that's ready for the image. And the size of the image is really going to depend on how much information is on the drive that we're going to be imaging or the system that we're going to be imaging. So we need to make sure wherever we put this file, that this WIM file that we're going to create, make sure we've got enough space. What I'm going to do is have a share drive available. So when we boot into Windows PE, I can simply share a drive out over the network, and I'm going to image directly to a file that I'm going to store on a remote share. So let's uh, try some of that whenever we get into that section. You also might want to remember if this is something that you would like to have an out-of-box experience with for the people that receive this image, make sure you sysprep prior to creating the image. After all, when somebody puts this image on their system, it's going to look exactly the way it looked the last time you left it. And unless you sysprep, they're not going to get that fancy out-of-box experience, assuming that's what you would like the end users to be able to use. Now, the final thing we're going to create here when we use this ImageX program is a Windows image file. It's a WIM file. It is based on a set of files put together. So it, it doesn't include information about the partitions. You have to build the partition separately on the machine that you're going to put it on. You're the one who's going to have to make sure you know exactly how you would like to lay out those partitions. The WIM file itself does not contain that information. It only contains files. Now, you can also have many, many images within a WIM file. If you recall in some of our previous videos, we looked at the WIM file that uh, Windows 7 came with, and there were a number of different images in there, one for Windows Home Premium, one for Professional, one for Ultimate, etc. And you can, of course, build a single a WIM file that has other images in it as well. In our next video, we're going to talk about how to choose which video when we're ready to do the imaging process. But for now, we're just going to build a single WIM file that has a single image on it, and that's what we're going to use to start deploying Windows 7. If you recall, we created this image on our Atlantis Research Lab computer. It's this virtual machine that I have that I'm running in Oracle VM VirtualBox. What I want to do, I've already put my virtual ISO file right here. This is a CD file that I've now 
added right to the system. VirtualBox is nice. You don't actually have to burn an ISO file. You can simply add an ISO file and it will use that as if it's a CD. So that makes it very easy. I just copied over the one that we created. And of course, we've got our normal Atlantis Research Lab hard drive there waiting for us to use. So let's start this up and let's see what we can do with it. Now, when this starts up, I'm going to move this over so we can see it. This is going to start up and it says press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. And that is exactly what I would like to do. So let's move this over so you can see it. And we're going to boot up our Windows PE disk that we just created. When this boots up and gives us a prompt, we'll then map a drive out to our share and we'll begin the imaging process. When Windows PE starts up, it gives us a prompt and says, OK, the rest is up to you. So at this point, I need to be sure that I have a place to put the image. So I'm going to do a net use, and I'm going to put this on Drive H. This is on my Daedalus server, and I just have a temp folder out there that's available. I also want to tell the net use that I'm going to use a specific username to log into this share. It is actually a local account, A-L-O-U-S, called professor and I'm going to hit enter and it says enter the password to connect to that list. I'll put in my password for that account and it's going to allow us to now use drive H. There's my drive H. It's just a temporary scratch place that I can use to put information. I've got 22 gig available so that should be plenty of room for us to do something with this imaging. Now let's look to see what we have here. If I go to the C drive and look at a directory, notice that the C drive is a system reserved. This is that 100 meg little section of the hard drive that Windows puts its files that it uses for recovery and for boot up. So I don't want to image that. That's one that our, I can always use some other place. If you'd like to image it, of course, you always could. I'm really most interested for what we're doing on imaging what's on drive D. There's my drive D. That's the one that has this lab image on it. That's the thing that I would want to image. Let's look at drive E, which is my CD-ROM, DVD-ROM. And you can see there's the image x.exe that we copied over to it when we were creating this. So that's how we were able to get that image x on here, is to have it available on this E drive. So we want to run that image x program from right there on the E drive. And I'm going to do the ImageX uh, flag to do this is capture. That's the command line prompt that I'm going to you tell ImageX, go out and grab everything that's on this drive. In fact, the drive I would like to do is D colon. And where I would like to put it is on H colon. And we'll just put it right there in the root of H. And I'm going to call this my uh, win7ultimate-lab. Dot win. That's a pretty good name for it. And then I can even give it a, a name in quotes so that whenever we're looking at this image has a description field of what this is. This is our Windows 7 Ultimate Lab image. That looks pretty good. And I'm also going to say take this image and slash compress. And I also want it to compress in a mode where it is fast. There's other ways that you can compress. I'm going to use the one that's kind of in the middle. So it, it still compresses this. It just it doesn't spend a lot of time and a lot of CPU cycles to do that. So it's a relatively fast compression type. I'm also going to use slash verify, which makes sure that the information we're writing to the image is actually correct. And although this is something that will take a little bit longer to do the image, I tend to do this just to make sure that the image and the actual hard drive that this was written from really are exactly the same. And I can feel comfortable with how this image was built. Let's hit Enter. And it's going to go through the process of excluding certain files by default. And these are things that you probably don't want on your image anyway, like backup files and recycle files and system volume information, page files, hibernate files. You don't want any of that. It does said, say that it's turning on verify option for the network share. And it's going to scan files and directories and go through the imaging process. This is going to take some time. It's going to take all the files, take all of them, and transfer them over across the network to create the WIM file. So what I'll do is speed this section up. And when it's done, I'll come back on and we'll see what we've created. And there you have it. The final imaging took 28 minutes and 8 seconds. And it has created a file for us. In fact, if we go out to our H drive and do a directory there, there is our win7ultimatelab.wim. And it's 2.2 gig in size. So now we've got a file that we can work with. Now we have a WIM file that we can take anywhere we'd like, run this ImageX program again, and have it create 
from that image a new hard drive with exactly the way that we left it on the old one. It's just that easy to create images. And now that you know the basic idea of how to do it, you should be able to take your Windows PE boot disk, go to any machine, and image anything you'd like. Let's review some topics from this video. Our first question is, which utility should be included on a Windows PE boot disk to provide us the image creation capability? If you recall, we copied over that one file, it's a pretty important file, it's called ImageX. And the next question, what should you remember to complete prior to creating an image? This is assuming, of course, that you would like the end users to get that out-of-box experience. So, of course, if you want to see that on all of your images, before you perform the image, you need to always run the SysPrep to get that out-of-box Windows welcome front end whenever you start this for the first time. And the last question, what format is the image that's created by ImageX? As you recall, we were taking everything in the hard drive, and it created a very standard image that we're going to use throughout these series of videos called a Windows Imaging Format File, or a WIM file. That covers our requirements for this video. We've now taken an entire machine and created an image from it. In our next video, we'll show you how to take that image and now start making changes to it, being able to add additional features and capabilities, or even remove features and capabilities from the things that's on that image without having to go back to our original reference machine. Should be interesting. If you'd like to watch that video and many, many of our other absolutely free Microsoft certification videos, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.